got multiple first round picks. When, when, they gave up multiple first round picks to acquire DeJounte Murray. Any negotiation with the Lakers would include the one first round pick that they have to trade. About the draft pick, it would almost assuredly have to be in uh, a deal for DeJounte Murray. The Atlanta Hawks have struggled way more than any of us could have ever expected recently. And as a result, they're considering blowing up their entire team. Currently, as it stands, the Atlanta Hawks are the 11th seed in the East. So how do they resolve this? What do they do to get back into contention? Do they have a fire sale and even consider trading Trey Young? There's a lot of ways that this can go. Before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all that out of the way, cue the intro. We made $1,100 off of a $20 entry on prize picks. And it wasn't just me, it was everyone that followed these picks on my Instagram story. And the best feeling is the amount of people that made money as a result of this. I mean, bam, bam, bam. Bam! My DMs were flooded, so the best part for me was seeing you guys make money as well. But we're not done yet. If you haven't signed up for prize picks, use my promo code microphone to double your deposit up until $100 on prize picks. And I give away my picks on a daily basis for free on my Instagram story and now my Snapchat story. We're having so much fun doing this. I'm so happy that I made you guys some money. And thank you, prize picks, for the sponsor. My check 1212. What's going on, everybody? In my last video on the Atlanta Hawks, I made one of the most embarrassing mistakes of my career where I did research on DeJounte Murray's contract. It said that it's set to expire this year. But when you scroll all the way down, it shows that he signed a contract extension, which I didn't remember off the top of my head. And I was really, really embarrassed about this. So I definitely made sure to take it into consideration and you guys held me accountable, rightfully so. And I hope you guys could forgive my horrific mistake. That being said, the DeJounte Murray trade was a trade that without a doubt, destroyed the Atlanta Hawks. Not necessarily from the sense that DeJounte Murray's a bad player by any means, but it was reported that Nick Ressler, which is the 28 year old son of Tony Ressler, which is the owner of the Atlanta Hawks, really pushed for the Atlanta Hawks to trade for DeJounte Murray. In order for this to happen, they had to shed the salary of players like Kevin Herter, in addition to giving up significant draft capital. As you guys remember, the original DeJounte Murray trade was Danilo Gallinari, three first round picks and a pick swap for DeJounte Murray and Jock Landale. This expedited the San Antonio Spurs rebuild. At the time, the philosophy was that the Atlanta Hawks were really struggling on the defensive side of the ball, but offensively, they were always a pretty solid team. In the 2021 to 2022 season, the Atlanta Hawks were second in offensive rating, but 26th in defensive rating. So they believed that trading for DeJounte Murray would solve all of their problems, but it didn't. The worst part of the DeJounte Murray trade was it had literally no effect on the Atlanta Hawks at all. And it made their problem even more confusing. Originally, they just needed more defense. Now that they traded for DeJounte Murray, they still need more defense. The season after trading for DeJounte, their offensive rating went to seventh and their defensive rating went to 22nd. And currently as it stands, their offensive rating is eighth in the NBA, whereas their defense is 27th in the NBA. Now, this isn't to solely blame DeJounte Murray. My own personal belief was the reason why this happened to begin with was because the Atlanta Hawks were a little bit more lax on DeJounte defensively, but I want to make a huge point of emphasis on how well DeJounte has been playing offensively. He's shooting 39% from three this year. His offensive box plus minus, which is a box score estimate of the offensive points per 100 possessions of a player contributed above a league average player translated to an average team is a 1.5, which is an improvement from last year, which was a 1.1, but not even close to what he was with the San Antonio Spurs, which is a 3.7. He was negative with the Spurs in each year prior, but you could primarily say that was because he was still developing. Regardless, the Atlanta Hawks are in the same exact position, and now it's looking a little bit more dire. You see, the Atlanta Hawks and Dallas Mavericks are two teams that are inexplicably tied together for the duration that Trey Young and Luka Doncic are going to be on their respective teams, and they both are doing whatever it takes to try to figure out how they can build a contender around their respective 
defensive stars. In the case of the Atlanta Hawks, they have maybe a season, or if they're really lucky, two more seasons before Trey Young starts making trade demands. Currently, as it stands, and a huge point of emphasis on making sure that we get the contracts right this time, guys, Trey Young's under contract for this season, next season, and the season after, and then he can opt out with his early termination option and hit free agency a year early. Typically, you'll see star players getting into trade rumors as soon as two years before their contract ends, primarily because that's when teams still have leverage over the players. So in the case of the Atlanta Hawks, their problem is that as it stands, in year one of the Quinn Snyder era, they are still mediocre at best. They're competing with the likes of the rebuilding Brooklyn Nets, Toronto Raptors, and Chicago Bulls for an opportunity to get into the 10th seed as a play-in team. Whenever you're in that sort of situation, at that point, you need to consider blowing it up. Now, there are multiple moves that the Hawks can make. They either decide to blow it up or they try to trade one of their stars and make it work with their existing roster. The most tradable player that they have on their roster is DeJounte Murray because he's young, has a skill set that is coveted, has a history being an incredible defender, and has a remarkable contract. A player of DeJounte Murray's caliber is making about $28 million a year annually. So it's a very tradable contract, which will entitle the Atlanta Hawks to some draft compensation. Now, this isn't something I'm just suggesting off of the top of my head. The Atlanta Hawks are continuing to be at the center of trade talks around the league. In addition to discussing DeJounte Dante Murray trade scenarios, the Hawks have also begun to show more interest over the weekend in dealing veteran center Clint Capella, sources told Clutch Sports. At the same time, we're seeing content like this, where DeJounte Murray is speaking nostalgically about his time with the San Antonio Spurs. I mean, it's forever like a home. Uh, I love the city. I love the fans. Uh, you know, it's everything about it. Uh, like I said, I'm excited to just go compete and play basketball, you know, today in, in NBA. But... Most importantly, you know, I'm back in San Antonio, so you always get a feeling where, you know, you spend a lot of time at which I was here for, you know, six years, so, you know, I'm just excited to be back. And the most important part is a DeJounte Murray trade to the San Antonio Spurs would make a lot of sense. I mean, if you're a point guard in the NBA, you most definitely want to play with Victor Webinyama, a player that is supposed to be the next generational player in the NBA, who is supposed to take the torch from LeBron James and lead the NBA into the future if he fulfills his potential. And according to Kevin O'Connor, it makes sense. Victor Webinyama hasn't benefited from playing with a high-level point guard yet, and Murray was an all-star in his final season with the Spurs, posting a 3.5 assist to turnover ratio. When he's at his best, he's an elite defensive guard who rebounds at a high level. Though he's not defending at the same level for the lowly Hawks, he's made significant strides as a scorer in Atlanta. The Spurs wouldn't have been bad enough to win the lottery and draft Webinyama had they not traded away Murray. But following a 7-31 start to the season, maybe getting back together with Murray could be the move that the Spurs need to turn things around. They still have a lot of draft capital, especially because of the original DeJounte Murray trade. So they could do a move that we typically see Bill Belichick do in the NFL, which is he'll move on from one of his players and then he'll trade back for him for a fraction of the price. He did that with JC Jackson this past year. The issue here is Atlanta has very valuable first round picks, almost too valuable to give back at this point. I mean, we're talking about a team that is the 11th seed. I mean, they're not even in the play in officially so far. So there's a chance that the lottery balls bounce the right way and they can end up getting a top 10 pick as a result of this. But Kevin O'Connor mentioned something that could be even crazier. And this is something that I don't think the Hawks would entertain. I don't think it's something the Hawks should entertain unless Trey Young begins stamping his feet and demanding it. And that's what if the Spurs try to pursue Trey Young instead? Trey Young is 25 in the prime of his career and the franchise could mutually decide that a divorce is in everyone's best interest. And again, San Antonio would be a great place for Trey Young to go because, well, you get to play with Wemby. The Spurs do have the capital to make such a trade go down by giving the Atlanta Hawks back their own picks, which is so twisted if you think about it. But if you're the Atlanta Hawks, you're in a very bad situation. Not only are you not contending, which is why you made the initial trade for DeJounte Murray, but if you continue not contending, you'll have nothing to show for it. You need assets if you need to rebuild. The Atlanta Hawks don't have any first round 
round picks until 2028, such as the reality when you go all in on a player that you believe can get you over the hump and help you win a championship and you're dead wrong about it. And that's exactly what happened to the Atlanta Hawks. They thought DeJounte Murray would get them over the hump and put them in a situation where they could contend consistently, but they were wrong. They got even worse. Another team that is interested in trading for DeJounte Murray is the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, as a Laker fan, I will admit, I am very confused about how a DeJounte Murray trade would go down with the Lakers. We're constantly hearing it, how the Los Angeles Lakers and the Atlanta Hawks plan to reignite talks this week. And the reason why this is gaining steam is because the Lakers are now officially allowed to trade Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura because they were restricted during the first few months of the regular season. And Austin Reeves and Rui Hachimura are the most attractive trade chips that the Los Angeles Lakers currently have. Chances are you're going to have to pair that with D'Angelo Russell or Gabe Vincent in order to get a player of DeJounte Murray's caliber next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. Now, DeJounte would be a perfect fit for the Lakers. Again, shooting 39% from the perimeter, has a long, lanky wingspan so he could contest passing lanes for the Lakers as well. You need some help defensively. His contract isn't as bad as Zach Levine's, who has a monstrosity of a contract. But the problem is the Lakers are not interested in trading Austin Reeves to the Atlanta Hawks, which means the Lakers are a little limited in terms of what they could do to get DeJounte Murray. And Dan Woik of the LA Times even mentions this. Murray is a player who definitely has the Lakers interest, and the Hawks would ask for Austin Reeves initially in those talks. The Lakers, though, have shown no interest in trading Reeves despite some defensive regression this season. And even if they did flip him for Murray, there's real skepticism that it would move the needle, a phrase you hear a lot when you talk to people about the Lakers and their deadline plan. If the cost to get DeJounte Murray is a first round pick and a win now young player, the Raptors elected for two of those players in lieu of a first round pick in their trade of OG Anunoby to the Knicks, then the Lakers can't really meet it without Austin Reeves. Sources say that there have been no discussions about trading Austin Reeves. On top of this, D'Angelo Russell is not viewed as a valuable trade chip for the Lakers either. So just as an honest Laker fan, it's very difficult to envision how a trade would be made for DeJounte Murray without including Austin Reeves. So there's a lot of ways this can go. I really agree with Kevin O'Connor's theory about the fact that the Hawks need to move on from DeJounte Murray and consider punting on this core altogether. Trey Young is a remarkable talent, but if you can't build around him and you don't have the assets to build around him, then what even is the point? You could trade him right now and get multiple years of draft compensation and hit reset. Or you could continue on with him and just be a middle of the road team. And I would say they should do everything they can to try to build a contender around Trey Young, but the problem is, what assets do you have in order to build a contender around Trey Young? Clint Capella, DeJounte Murray, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and that's really about it. At the end of the day, the Hawks were way too aggressive in trading for DeJounte Murray. They gambled, and they were incorrect. Maybe Tony Ressler shouldn't let his 28-year-old son play NBA 2K with his team, because the Atlanta Hawks were on the path to greatness prior to the DeJounte Murray trade. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this man aside from that i'm your boy mike i'm dropping our mic until our next upload